give him glory, honor, and adoration. Just appreciate the King of glory, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one that is keeping you alive. Let's just appreciate him for a moment. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. As they were singing, I heard God say to me, that there is somebody here that by Friday this week you'll be singing a new song. Amen. Amen. I received that for myself. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Our gathering is not unto man, it's unto you. We thank you, Lord, because you are a God that speaks. Thank you for sending your word that by Friday we will sing a new song. Father, we pray that every one of us will have a testimony in Jesus' mighty name. King of glory, increase us in every area in Jesus' mighty name. Change our song to songs of rejoicing in Jesus' mighty name. Give every one of us our own personal testimonies in Jesus' mighty name. Father, in the next few minutes, please speak to us. Encourage us. Heal us. Deliver us. Make a way where there seems to be no way. Father, O Lord, reveal our purpose even unto us. At the end of this service, let us know that we have had a divine encounter with you. And let every one of us even testify. Blessed be your name, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Praise the name of the Lord. Let's clap for Jesus as we have our seats and I appreciate the best choir in the kingdom. Thank you, choir. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Over the past um, few weeks of this year, we've been talking about, um, you know, purpose, fulfilling destiny. And I believe that the title of the sermons uh, essentially have been The Great Discovery. So if you want a title for today's sermon to be The Great Discovery 4. And as you can imagine, today's sermon is a continuation of the series called The Great Discovery. You know, sometimes when Coca-Cola or any of these people repeat advertisements on the TV or they are just on the billboard. It's so that each time you see it, you know, it, it, it creates something in you. You don't forget it, and all you'll be thinking of is Coke. Amen? So sometimes when we have to go back to come forward, it's because what we believe the Lord has given us this year is so important. And my prayer is that by the end of this year, every one of us would have found our purposes and started fulfilling it in Jesus' mighty name. So, this sermon again is based on the theme for the year, which is fulfilling purpose in destiny. In a nutshell, it means that you should fulfill purpose in line with God's ordained plan and purpose for your life. So there are two. So we described purpose. Your purpose is the goal, your ambition your own plans towards which your efforts are directed, your, your pursuits. What is your goal? What is your ambition? What is your own plan? Uh, where are you directing all your efforts? Um, uh, uh, and what are your pursuits? And we distinguish this uh, from destiny. And we say that destiny is your life purpose the eternal purpose, the ultimate plan, the perfect plan of God for your life. It is written in God's book, the things you are supposed to achieve, to accomplish. This world is not our own. We are here on errand. We are here on an assignment. And once the assignment is finished, you go back home. Your home is heaven. So God sent us here he had something in mind. He had a perfect plan that he wants you to accomplish. He has an assignment for you, customized for you in his own program. And Psalm 139, verse 15 and 16 in the NLT, Psalm 139, 15 and 16 in the NLT version, says that even before you were born, it says you watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. 16. He says, you saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out 
before a single day had passed. So everything that is going to happen, God has already written it down in his book. And it's clearer with Jeremiah chapter 1 and verse 5 in the NLT version. Jeremiah 1 and 5 in the NLT version. It says, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. And before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nations. Talking about Jeremiah. Before you were born. This is what I sent you to do. So if he did something different, then... <laughs> He would not fulfill purpose. His life purpose was to be a prophet to the nations. You can be anything else, but the real plan of God for your life is to be a prophet to the nations. That is concerning Jeremiah. Now, the problem is that most times our pursuits, our goals, and our plans can be different from our life purpose. God's ultimate plan and purpose for our lives. And as such, many of us can reach all our personal goals of becoming a raving success in the eyes of the world. By the world standard, you are successful and still miss your life purpose, thereby not fulfilling destiny. My prayer is that that will not be your story in Jesus' mighty name. There has to be an alignment between what you are doing and the plan of God for your life. There has to be a handshake between your goals, your pursuits, your plans, and what is written concerning you in God's own book. That's why it's so important for us this year to discover the purpose and ensure that it aligns with God's plan and ultimate purpose for our lives. And of course, we've referred to the story of Esther. In the book of Esther, she had a life goal. She was a slave girl. She had an ambition to become a queen. And God favored her. Everything worked for her. She became the queen of the land. She moved from the hut to the palace. And in her eyes, she had arrived. But she thought that the position of being a queen was the end not knowing that according to God's plan, it was a means to an end. It wasn't the end, but a means to an end. And when problem came in the land and they wanted to persecute and kill all the Jews, when her uncle Mordecai went to her and said, you are influential now, you are the queen. Please speak to the king for us. She hesitated. She said, it's a dangerous thing. I haven't even seen this king, this my husband, for 30 days. And if anybody approaches him and you're not called for, if he does like this, then they will just grab you, cover your face, and cut off your head. I don't want to lose my life. People of God, in Esther chapter 4 and verses 1 to 4, particularly verse 4, the story says that Mordecai now put on sackcloth and sat by the gate. And when they told Esther, she had forgotten what it meant to wear sackcloth. That it means you are mourning, there's a problem, you need divine intervention. She sent clothes from its new to me to her uncle. That go and check, how can you be? My own uncle wearing sackcloth, dirty torn clothes. She had forgotten. Life has been too good. She sent change of clothes. But we thank God for a mentor like our uncle in Esther chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, in the NIV version and the Amplified version, Esther 4, 13 to 14. Her uncle reminded her that you became queen for this occasion. You came to your royal position for such a time as this. Not an end, but a means to an end. The reason why God favored you is because he had a plan that a time will come when we will need you to influence the king. So, sort yourself out. And God may be speaking to somebody today. The reason why you are blessed, the reason why he made you rich, 
The reason why he healed you, why he gave you your gifts, is because there is an assignment. I'm not only talking about the Trinity Towers, that is important. But he gave you that testimony so you can share it, don't hide it. He gave you that gift so that you can bless the body of Christ. He gave you that position so that you can use it for the kingdom. It's not an end in itself. It's a means to an end. He's keeping you alive because he has a plan and purpose for you that you have not fulfilled. My prayer is that God will speak to us in Jesus' mighty name. People of God, we thank God that Esther aligned. She repented and aligned. And her life became profitable to God. She intervened and the Jews were saved. Her life brought honor to God. And because she aligned with her eternal life purpose, God blessed her. God increased her. Increased her in favor and honor. God destroyed all her enemies and canceled the sentence of death. That is why my prayer is that as we align with our life purpose, starting from this year and today, that the right hand of God's favor will rest upon us in Jesus' mighty name. That God will bless us beyond our expectations in Jesus' mighty name. Those of you that you think you are rich, you have not seen anything yet. Because when everything aligns, oh, God will enlarge your coast in every area in Jesus' mighty name. He will bless you financially. He will bless you physically, materially. He will bless you with things that money cannot buy. And he will destroy all your enemies. He will silence all your mockers in Jesus' mighty name. And God will honor you. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, as I discover my life purpose, Father, as I align my pursuits and goals with your plan for my life, Father, let the right hand of your mercy and your favor rest upon me. Bless me. Enlarge my coast, O oh Lord. Destroy all my enemies. Silence all my mockers. Increase me in every area and answer all my prayer requests in Jesus' name. Lift up that prayer point, lift it up, lift it up. That as you begin to align, that God will bless you beyond your expectations, He will answer your prayers, He will grant you peace, He will even enlarge your coast. That you will be favored, that the mercy of God will be yours. He will silence all your enemies and disgrace all your mockers, He will give you your own personal testimony. And God will make your name great. Lift that prayer point. Lift it up. Lift it up. And it shall be so in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And every sentence of death on everybody in this assembly and those that are connected to us is cancelled in Jesus' mighty name. Not so the rich fool. We know the story in Luke 12, 20 to 21. God gave him riches. He blessed him beyond everybody else. But he became self-centered. He forgot about the purposes of God. His life was not profitable to God. He was holding back, thinking that all the money and all the favor was for him and his family. He was building castles, investing all over the world. And then God came to him and said, look at your life. Your life is not rich towards me. You're not profitable to me. And that night, he lost his life. My prayer is that that will not be our portion in Jesus' mighty name. If one does not know and fulfill purpose, this is so dangerous. One can end up in hell. A wasted life. Matthew 25 and verse 30. God calls them the unprofitable servant. He kicked them out into outer darkness my prayer is that if you are right now on the wrong track the wrong path god will redirect your steps aright in jesus mighty name you will not live a wasted life your life will count now and in eternity in jesus mighty name say i believe i receive so shall it be in jesus mighty name so we said it's important for you to know but the question that we're on right now, how do I discover my life purpose? How do I make sure there's an alignment between what I'm doing and what God really, really wants me to do? How do I discover? 
And the key to discovery of your life purpose is in an encounter with God. You must have an encounter with God. That's why we said that this month is also a month of divine encounter. And my prayer is that we'll have an encounter with God. In every area of our lives, you will meet God. Amen? And you will testify in Jesus' mighty name. Now, it doesn't have to be dramatic, like, you know, Damascus experience. But it must be God orchestrated. And there are various ways. If you want to know why you are born, who do you ask? You ask God. You ask God. You are born by his purpose to fulfill his purpose. Colossians 1.16 in the message. Colossians 1.16 and in the message version. He has a purpose. Amen. His purpose for your life predates your conception. He wrote it down. He planned it before you existed without your input. You can choose your career. You can choose where to live. You can choose your wife or your husband. You can choose your hobbies. But when it comes to your purpose, the life purpose is God that chooses. Not you. And most of the time, we usually begin with ourselves. Ah, what do I want to do with my life? What are my goals, my ambitions? What are my dreams for my future? Focusing on self will never reveal life's purpose. The box stops with God. Many of us begin to speculate. We guess, we conjecture. Moses, he missed it initially because he didn't wait for God. He didn't ask God. So when he saw an Egyptian killing a Hebrew child, he went there, killed the Hebrew. They almost killed him. He had to wait for another 40 years. You need to ask the inventor about the invention. You need to ask the manufacturer about... What is this for? What is your plan concerning this invention? So discovery of purpose starts with an encounter with God. It might be directly. It might be through other means. But one thing that is important is that you must discover. You must discover. And life is brief. We're not here forever. If you have not discovered now, when will you discover now? Jesus discovered his own was remarkable. But at the age of 12, he was in his life purpose. So if at your age you don't know, huh, that's a problem. But my prayer is that God will reveal it to us in Jesus' mighty name. Speaking for myself, how did I discover my own purpose? God must love me. I must have seen what I was supposed to do. The first encounter was in Ife. Great Ife. Great. That's the best university in the world. Amen? Can't talk about Mao and all those other. <laughs> I was in Ife. And Ife was just God that saved us. We were having disco underwater. It was that bad. So somebody came to me and said, ah, God said I was going to be a pastor. I just hissed and blasted him. Pastor, me, pastor. Get out, Joe. I'm enjoying my life. A lot of our friends died on the bike and, you know, we're living dangerously. And then I joined the workforce by chance in Freedom Hall about 24 or 25 years ago, thereabout, me and my sweetheart, we had been looking for a church that, you know, where we can find, you know, or call home. I went to Deeper Life because my wife had a little stud and had a chain. They positioned ushers to stand next to her, thinking that she will manifest. <laughs> I went to Trem. 
We were just looking around for churches. Then we just happened to get to Roxy, where, you know, Fidon was started. And we had a very expressive son. Very energetic. Nobody could take care of our son anywhere else. But when we got to Fidon, they just grabbed him. And we didn't see him until the end of the service. And by the time we saw him, he had sweets. He was smiling. He was, I'd never seen anything like that before. So that's why children can bring you to church. Amen. <laughs> Let's clap for our children. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> and then I became an usher. I became head usher. Then I was posted out with my sweetheart to New Covenant Assembly under Pastor Tokumbo at this one. I was head usher there. Occasionally we would say we should come on stage and sit on stage, but I hated, you know, they had chairs on stage. I didn't like it because I always sleep. Indeed, many pastors sleep. That's why on uh, church towers you will not be sitting on the stage, amen? Because sometimes you just do, maybe because of vigils and things like that, amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. Then I received a letter, 1995, September, and they said that we should go and set up the King's Court at the Lagoon Restaurant. Freedom Hall was in Surulere. We didn't have a church in Via. They said, okay, all right, you go and do Lagoon Restaurant. Maybe there was one uh, before, you know, victory something, you know, but they said, go to Lagoon. I had never preached before. My prayer was never great. Even till now, I'm still, you know, it wasn't all those, you know. So, of course, I broke down. For two weeks, I was weeping. I sent for my father's notes, summer notes. But when I opened them, the beginning, very God of very, you know, Anglican way of praying was different from our own prayers. But he was a great preacher. I used some of his, some, I didn't know my right from my left. Then, around the 20 something of September, there about 1995, I slept. Then God showed me a vision. God is merciful. I was standing before the Lincoln Memorial. For those that don't know, uh, I've told them to show you what I saw. I was standing before it. I've shared this story before. Amen. Uh, the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. I didn't see his head because that was exactly what I saw. And I was standing in front of it with Pastor Tony, who was the head of the family then. He was holding a scroll. It was very short, white scroll. Then I stood next to him and held my own scroll. And he went on and on and on. I couldn't see the end of it, meaning that somebody was holding it somewhere, somehow, sometime. Because it didn't fall. They didn't say anything. Just that, standing in front of that, because that is a representation of God. So sometimes when you see your dream, some people don't, it doesn't need, really mean that, that those are the people. It doesn't mean that I should run to America and start a church in uh, Washington, D.C. as some people. <laughs> so, I didn't understand it. But I remembered it. God was saying that the reason why our pastor's scroll was short was because Freedom Hall was coming to an end. That move was ending. And one way or the other, I was going to be involved in leadership role in the next major move of that, you know, whatever we were. And indeed, one year exactly, 1996, Freedom Hall was broken into four. And one of it was the city of David. And they went to Lagoon restaurant then where we were. We had to move out for them. And I just continued. I received that vision of exceeding greatness. That whatever we were doing or going to do was going to be bigger than whatever we had done before. And then March Holy Ghost many years after the general university called me God is merciful. I was just doing my thing. Then obviously I called me. 
and said, God told him that he wanted to use three people to do great work in Europe, America, and Nigeria. And God said he should be throwing up the names of his pastors. I wasn't even an area pastor or anything then. We are just enjoying ourselves at the King's Court. And he just started throwing up the names. Indeed, at King's Court, when we were doing vigils, at 3 a.m., we would stop and have sandwiches and tea. <laughs> and we were just sealing and just relaxing, enjoying and loving ourselves. But I said, Joe, came to him, and God said, throw up the names of your big, big, all the pastors. He was throwing up, he said, no, 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 no. That when he threw up my name, God said, yes, I will use him because he's committed. And I always say, I thank God that I didn't say he's spiritual or anything. He's committed. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so, then he now started telling me the great and mighty, all the things that, you know, some of the things that, you know, the greatness of the work. So God, after many years, filled in the gap. Because the vision I saw didn't say Jack. But I knew one way or the other. I was going to be involved. So in 2007, when I came to this church, and they made me the head of the family, the vision came back. So I now could piece it together. That is why I'm confident that we haven't seen anything yet. And ever since then, promotions here and there, I became full pastor when I, I didn't deserve anything. One way or the other, God has blessed me and gave me a wonderful congregation that believe in the vision and awesome pastors. And we're not paid. We're doing it free. But we are in our life. But I know that this is what God wants me to do. I wanted to be a senior advocate of Nigeria. I trained under Ghanifa Emi, very fairy and all that. But look at me today. Preaching. Amen. <laughs> but God showed it to me. Amen. God showed it to me. People of God. And once you know your purpose, it gives you focus. It produces passion. That's why I'm passionate. And I'm committed to whatever God has given me to do. Psalm 3, uh, Philippians 3, 13 to 14. Philippians 3, 13 for the NLT. Paul said, this one thing I do. I focus. I know. Yes, we don't get paid here. And I always remind people that I'm still a lawyer. So don't forget, amen? At least if money doesn't come from here, it should come from somewhere else, amen? And I will not beg. And God has been faithful, more than faithful, Amen? No regrets at all. This one thing I do. I focus. So I know that this is my life purpose. I enjoy it. And it wouldn't have been possible without wonderful people like you. Let's once again clap for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So, how did I discover an encounter with God? Prophecy, God showed me a vision. And I'm in my life purpose. And today, if you ask me, I can say what was said in Psalm 16 and verse 6. It says, the lines are falling for me in pleasant places. People of God, even when the walk is rough and tough, I know that all things work together for good. That at the end of the day, I will have last. Isaiah 3 10 says, Say it to the righteous, it shall be well with you. If you marry a woman that you know is your wife, the bone of your bone, that you have no doubt, it doesn't matter what life serves you. You know that that is your wife. If she deals with you, pardon, builds you, there must be a reason. You, because you know. 
whatever life serves you, you know you didn't make a mistake. So, the how, and I know that I'm not the only one, there must be people here who have discovered their life purpose. Mine, God was merciful, he gave me direct vision. Your story might be different. But we are on the journey to this discovery. We need to know from those that have discovered how. How? It's just the how we want. Was it a dream? Was it a word of prophecy? So because of our time, we just take one or two. One or two. One or two. Anybody that has discovered Anybody that has discovered? Anybody here that has discovered this block? Anybody? Anybody here that has discovered? Anybody so important? You've discovered? Yes, yes. Is the lady there? Yeah. Who? Yes. The how? Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Eleven years ago, we were on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. We did a second baptism in the immersion of uh, water. When I got to, to my room that day, there was a particular nightgown, yellow, I wore on top of the white they gave to us after the baptism. I dreamt that night. I saw myself in that yellow nightgown. I saw that, that I saw myself inside a boat, inside the river. That I just saw that it's like I wanted to go with that boat. But somebody just told me that, come. Don't you know that this boat is not only meant to be empty? That you need to bring people along with you to ride on the boat. When I woke up in the morning, one of the pastors that we went with, I asked that. That was the dream I dreamt. That, can he just explain it to me? So he told me that God said, you should be fishers of men. And that was all. And, the, and, you are and, in and, and I'm a fishers of men. Then later, I joined the evangelism in the church. Then later, through my fellowship, I discovered that I'm supposed to be an intercessor for the nation, which I am now, and I'm still. Let's clap for Jesus and give her two envelopes, one for her and one for her supporter. Eh? Hallelujah. Is, is that awesome? Is, is that awesome? She knows. She knows. She knows. Yes, go on. Yes. Yes. Mine was, uh, I had a dream why I was in a primary school, but first dream I ever had, I think primary five or so, I saw myself talking to a huge crowd. So I never had much understanding what that was. But two years later, crisis happened that made us relocate from our town. And our pastor of the local church we were attending started using me, picking me to take recitation, assisting me. So that was where the foundation of talking to the church, leading people uh, started. So when I was in university, we had one retreat in Unibering for workers. And I became, uh, my request was, the title was Discovering Purpose. So I asked God, tell me my own purpose, specify it. Purpose is why, let me know my line. <laughs> and the second day of the retreat, God told me, son, take my word to the people. And in that place, I saw one of my friends, then I was in a Sunday school teacher, when we were solving a problem together, and it's also in the Sunday school department. So that's when I started buying a book, building myself, and since then... And right I, now, what do you do? You speak I, to I people, teach, yes, you teach. School. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus and give him an envelope. Yes. Praise the Lord. Um, I'm a pharmacist. Um, in the, I'm a pharmacist. But I found that, um, I found myself doing research work into sickle cell anemia. But not just by my power. In the dream, uh, I, I will see the big terminalia catapa tree, it is called. That is fruit. And um, he will explain to me these fruits, the leaves, the yellow leaves and the red leaves. Then I was not doing uh, my master's yet. Then I registered with the University of Ibadan. And my professor then now say, this fruit, 
The yellow one is for arthritis. The red one is for sickle cell anemia. He will say, how do you know? I said, this is what was revealed. Then they'll go and do the experiment and they'll find that was how it was. And every step of it as we were going on, he was leading and I was following until I questioned him. When he said, Professor XYZ will do this, I said, how? And the dream stopped for two years. Yes, no, nothing again. Until there was, I repented, I knew I, 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 I did wrong. Then it came back again. And he was telling me, it was just one plant. And he kept telling, this is what it is used for. This is how to prepare it. This is how to move forward with it. And that I found, it has been opening doors for me. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus and give her an envelope. Amen. Now we've had dreams. Is there any other way that God can reveal purpose? Praise Somebody else that has something else? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, it was in the year 2001. Yes. I joined the movie industry, AGN. So when I was there, I wanted to be an actress. So as I was going on and on, I got to understand that things were very difficult if you don't join them. If you can't beat them, you join them. So it was very tough for me. So by his grace, I got Stop to Stop showing me. Show her. What's wrong with you? Am I the one speaking? Uh -huh. So yeah. I got to now meet a guy. His name was Innocent in the year 2000. Sue. So he was a script writer. So I now got to move with him. I see the way he scripts. I learned a lot of things from him. I asked questions. So I began to develop how to script. So for, from 20, 2001 to 2000, 2005, I became very, very good with scripting. I began to enjoy it. I began to like it. So I was writing um, the worldly movies. So later, I just, after a while, when I got to know very well about scripting, I just heard a voice just told me that I didn't make you understand this. I didn't give you this education for the world. I want you to do it for me. Mm. So I just began to rehearse writing in a gospel way. I just, begin, I just began to change everything. By and you now write, and I write in the gospel, gospel way. Totally. Hallelujah. Let's clap for Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So God can divinely connect you. He can send mentors. He can speak audibly to you. Do we understand? Yes, let's start for Jesus and give an envelope. Yes, we must round up right now. Amen. We'll just take one more. Amen. One more. It's the principle that you need to understand. We'll give you opportunities to talk about this. But we heard about dreams. God can speak to you audibly. He can send mentors like Mordecai unto you. Can we have one more? Yes, madam. Yes, there's a lady here. Right in front of me. Put up your hand so that they can see you. Let's clap for Jesus. Yes. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, for security reasons, I will not mention names, but I will just explain. Yes. Um, Some time ago, I was in Abuja working and I uh, got transferred. Before I came, I was called to say, you're going to work here and you need to salvage you're going to salvage s a l v h salvage yeah mm -hmm. i have to you know so they told me they were selling at a loss problem you know here and there in federal government and they said to me they have never made beyond 23 billion will i be able to make that in a year i said with god on my side i will do that and um i went for a meeting i came back it's, it's a place that people do, don't really want to stay and work. But I said, I will do it with God on my side. And problems started. In the, in the course of doing that job, I was abducted. I was brought back after, you know. And to the glory of God, the first year, from 30, uh, 23, we made 200 something billion mm. for federal government. Oh and it's been tough, Trinity but we're still built. doing it. Amen. <laughs> we are still doing it, Amen. and uh, God is helping me. The threat has not stopped. Amen. But uh, you have to answer my question. Okay, sir. We are talking about purpose. Purpose. And yeah, that's how did you, if you believe that's your purpose, you know, 
to, to serve. Do, to serve. To serve the to serve the masses. That's why I said I'm going to speak in to serve the masses. Language, okay. Yeah. To, to serve, serve Nigeria. To serve the masses. Yes. Yeah, so how did help. you discover? How will I discover that that is what God wants you to I do? I had a revelation. Eh, that's what we want now. I had a revelation. I even told my sister here. What is the that revelation? That appeared to me. Uh -huh. and said, "I will help you." That was what he said. And Mommy Gio said, "Don't be afraid." Two of them, I saw them in diff uh, different yeah. occasions. That is representation of God. It's not Daddy Gio. Okay. It is God. Okay, <laughs> so don't go and worship uh, anybody. It's God can use anybody. Your pastor, but know that it is God. If that Joe called you directly, yes. No, it came okay? in, a, in a dream. If, if it's a dream, yeah. you know, God can use him. He would normally, if he wants to be God, he can use the face of your pastor, and that's why he used the daddy Joe. So, all the glory to God. To Amen. God. Let's clap for Jesus and, and give her an envelope. Now, you know, it's important for us to cooperate. Is either you know or you don't know. But if you know, please share with other people. Amen? Before I sit down, from the scriptures, can we refer to somebody that, for example, how did Saul know his purpose? How did he enter into his purpose? Does anybody know? Saul? Saul? King Saul? Yes? Anybody? 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 Yes. Anybody? Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul. Uh, is this Saul of Tarsus? King Saul. You heard me now, Saul. Saul, when he, he met the people, he was going to look for the, his father's uh, animal. Uh -huh. He, he was going to look for the lost sheep of his father. Daddy just said, Look, my sheep is missing. Go and look for it. Nothing spiritual. And as he was going, he met a prophet. Say, ah, God said I should come here because he knew you were coming. God directed your footsteps to be here. You thought you were going to look for sheep. But God had a plan. And they anointed him and he became a king. So you think you are just here in church. Even that person sitting next to you. Hmm, maybe he has a word from God for you. So why don't you just ask that person, do you have a word for me from God? Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Our time is gone. We'll have a service that is just going to be sharing of how we, we you know, uh, we know our purposes. Psalm 39 and verse 4 in NLT version tells us that life is brief. Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered. How fleeting my life is. That's why it's so important. The Bible says that so teach us to number our days. We're not here forever. You must discover. And God will speak to you in various ways. I don't want to reveal all that I have here because it's better for you to us talk back let's interact then we'll decide how did the people in scriptures find it people of god it's so important for you to know life is brief when we stand before god two questions what did you do with my jesus oh i accepted him i had a relationship with him the second thing is that what did you do with the gifts the talents the opportunities that i gave you did you spend it on yourself or was your life profitable even unto me? Exodus chapter 12 verse 1. Exodus 12 verse 1 says, Remember now your creator. This is the time to, to get our lives together. We should be worried if we don't know why God sent us here. Why he created you and I. And that is why it's important for us to pray a prayer. And we'll pray that prayer and shut down. But you can't even know <laughs> your purpose, your life purpose, unless you have an encounter with God. And the first encounter that you can have with him 
is for you to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. So if you don't know him as your personal Lord and Savior, how can you discover the way? He says, I am the way. I'm the life that you're looking for. I'm the path to heaven. I am the way. So you have to connect with the way. So as all eyes are closed, are you here? You don't know just as a person as a, and savior. It's going to be difficult for you to discover your assignment. He is the one that knows what is written concerning you in God's book. So the first step is to enter into a relationship with Jesus. So if you are here, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, just lift up your hands right now. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. You want to know your purpose. Your life purpose is so important. There's a danger. Believe me. Welcome you, good and faithful servant. Or depart from me, you unprofitable servant. It's a choice. The choice begins with you choosing Christ. Choosing to know him personally. To walk with him. He will lead you in the path of righteousness. So are you here? You know you are a sinner. And you want to come home. You have burdens. He's the burden bearer. He will reveal your life purpose unto you. And he will align you aright. He does it in various ways. But first, there's an invitation. He says, come. Come unto me, you that labor and are heavy laden. And I'll give you rest. So if you're here, you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, just lift up your hands right now and we'll pray with you. Just a short prayer is so important. You have ears. You know, the, the, one of the scriptures... That, that I, I fear most. Thank you. Just come forward. If you're, if you're lifting up your hands, just come forward. You know, the Bible says that all that we hear will stand in judgment. If, on judgment day, you, this service will be paid. And they will see me making that invitation. All our discussions. And you just hold it back. So if you're upstairs, come down quickly. Come down quickly. Anybody else? Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. That will be a playback. And you will see yourself not responding. Ha! That's why I say there will be a lot of crying and weeping and gnashing of things that ah, had I known. Had I known. Discovery of that purpose starts with God. You need to come and meet your God right now. Let's clap for Jesus as they come. Come, come, come. He wants to help you. Why waste your life when he can tell you this is the way. This is what I planned for you. And as you do it, things will begin to open. You can be very wealthy and do all kinds of things and feel fulfilled and still miss it. So it's not about whether you are accomplished or not. Accomplished by what standard is not accomplished by God's standard. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. And those that are clapping, are you sure? Do you know? <laughs> you yourself that you are clapping. <laughs> Should you be out here? Should you be out here? Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Anybody else? God has spoken enough. It's a choice that you have to make. Either to sit down and there's danger of welcome or depart from me. Or you come and you give God the opportunity to reveal to you. Rest of all, let's stretch forth our hands towards these ones and just begin to thank God for their lives. Let us thank God for bringing them to church and pray that God will reveal himself unto them will enter into a relationship with them, forgive them their sins, and write their names in the book of life. In Jesus' mighty name. Now repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. I know I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my sins. With my mouth, I confess that Jesus Christ, I accept you as the Lord of my life. Please forgive me my sins. Write my name in the book of life. And reveal your plan and purpose for my life. Unto me. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. You need to go with my brother and my sister. Amen. Hallelujah. We have some gifts for you. I want to tell you more about what God has done in your life. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Let's clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Amen. They are going to step into greatness. That plan and purpose will be revealed unto them. And their lives will profit God. So we want to pray just one prayer. It's so important for you to know. Some of us are lucky, blessed, that God just reveals. I wasn't praying. I was not asking for it. But just, he just gave me, he interrupted me. He interrupted my life. Gave me a vision. And I know that I know. So it's so important for you to discover. Yes, you are born again. Yes, you are successful. Why did God give you all those things? Is that a plan? Is that a purpose? So we're going to pray to God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that you, being the revealer of secrets, whatever you have written in your book concerning me, concerning my assignment, concerning my life purpose, reveal it unto me right now through dreams, through various ways. Father, I need to know. Realign my life, O oh Lord. Reveal your purpose unto me and let me walk in it and let me fulfill purpose in Jesus. By the lift of that prayer that God will reveal his plan concerning you. He will reveal it. He can send people to you. He can cause you to dream. He can whisper to you. There are various ways that he can do it. Pray, pray, pray. That one way or the other God will reveal unto you. He will reveal unto you. He will reveal unto you. He will orchestrate your understanding of your assignment. And you will fulfill it. The grace to fulfill it. 